A hurricane has not made landfall on the Virginia coast since at least 1851. When storms hit our region, they often have North Carolina in their crosshairs. Meteorologist Miles Henderson visited the Outer Banks and shows us how the area is working to address severe weather concerns. The Outer Banks of North Carolina. It's a summer vacation destination for many, but for some, these barrier islands are home. And when the weather turns bad, it's much more than a canceled beach day. I have driven through the S-curves when the waves were hitting the side of the car and your tires were getting sucked into the sand on the road. So that was really a bad, bad day. Natalie Cavanaugh is a Hatteras Island local and business owner. She has seen some of the very best and worst that Mother Nature can bring to the Outer Banks. Hurricanes are a part of life for us. They are a way of life for us. We know we're going to have them. We generally are prepared for them. If you grew up here or lived here a long time, you're pretty uh, adept at dealing with them. One of the biggest weather challenges along the Outer Banks is trying to keep Highway 12 clear of sand and water, especially during hurricanes or nor'easters. So this is one vital link and that's it. There's no other way around it. So it's very important for us to keep it open and safe for the traveling public and the people that are visiting. When we have storms and the sand and water become issues that make it unsafe for travel in some parts of the county. So it's a constant battle for us whenever there are storms. For years, one of the biggest travel trouble spots was an area known as the S-curves between P Island Refuge and Rodanthe. This section of highway had to be rebuilt after Ida in 2009, Irene in 2011, and Sandy in 2012. Where we're standing is that elbow of the Outer Banks that sticks out into the Atlantic. So the department needed to do something to maintain a reliable transportation corridor. After years of studies, planning and construction, a more permanent fix opened in 2022. Here at Rodanthe at the S-curves, we did that very thing as we relocated NC-12 to the new Rodanthe Bridge. That provides us a reliable corridor so that we don't have to uh, have the road closed for weeks, if not months at a time. The new Rodanthe Bridge, also known as the Jug Handle Bridge, redirects Highway 12 over the Pamlico Sound, allowing the sand to reclaim the S-curves for good. So just being able to bypass that area has been so nice. And it saves a few minutes off the trip down here too. I think it feels like it's a little bit faster. The good news, this section of the drive is safer, more reliable, and faster. The bad news, there's a new number one trouble spot. Right here, the visitor center is one of our number one hot spots now. This is the one that will frequently close the road. Unfortunately, there will always be a new trouble spot to worry about. As a barrier island, the sands of the Outer Banks are always moving. In the surf zone over here, you can see old cypress stumps and pine stumps. So those stumps are indications that this actually was the sound side of the barrier island many, many, many years ago. And so as the barrier island moves and overwashes, you have the beach front and then you have new sound front developing. So what's the next step? North Carolina Department of Transportation is reviewing a feasibility study to examine potential new bridge locations environmental concerns, utility challenges like power lines and fiber optic cables, and of course, funding. It's always gonna be an issue, one part of the island or another, you're gonna have to do like, there will be days where you can't drive around. It's just part of life here. On the Outer Banks, Miles Henderson, News 3.